Hi, good evening and a very warm welcome to this very special uh, Eagles Nest in Live here at the Eagles Community Arena. Now, I hope that you are all comfortable and you're going to have an absolutely fantastic time tonight. We have got three players for you. We've got our head coach, Ian McLeod, and Paul Blake joining us. Please do, while you are watching online, though, send through your questions. You can do that straight to my screen here. Just uh, email live at newcastle-eagles.com. Want to get your questions in and we'll put as many as we can to the guys through now and when we're going to wrap up uh, roughly around about 45 minutes from now. We've had so many sent in already. Uh, I won't name check everybody. There's a lot of duplicate questions. I'll try and get through as many as I can and we'll get through them and find out some of the things that have been making the guys tick this season in such extraordinarily uh, difficult and strange circumstances. Uh, just to get us started though, I want to welcome on our first guest tonight and that is our managing director, Paul Blake. Paul, if you can please come and join me and just uh, sit yourself here next to the screen. Hi, Dan. Hi. Nice two metres social distancing we're observing, of course, tonight. Uh, something that we've become very accustomed to. And, uh, I mean, it is great to be able to do this online on social media and, uh, you know, to, to be here at uh, this amazing venue that we've got. But uh, it is really missing one thing, isn't it? Yeah, people in the seats. And, uh, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, given the government... Um, announcements the last couple of days it it looks unlikely that we're um going to be able to get fans into the venue between now and the end of the season uh never say never but um it's it's doubtful which is a you know a, a real cry and shame um uh particularly not being able to see this this team um which has uh you know shown us some great games this season I mean, absolutely. The, the action uh, people have been able to see on the BBL player, our season ticket holders watching online have obviously had free access to that uh, and that will continue. There's been some amazing performances from uh, a brand new bunch of guys and some returning players, but you know, you must be so proud of how they've gelled together in such a, a really difficult time. It's not like any season we've ever had before in all those years of success over the 17 seasons that we've won those 26 trophies. Yeah, it's it's just a, a, a very odd year, and um, I mean Ian will, Ian will tell you, and the guys will tell you themselves. It's uh, it's a really good bunch of guys this year, and uh, I just I feel for them, I really do, because uh, you know to to keep motivated to come out and keep playing when essentially you're going back home to your apartment and there's nothing to do uh, other than, than than you know come here, go back, come here, go back. Uh, it is. It must be incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult mentally uh, when when you're playing in the schedule that we're playing in at the minute as well. Uh, it's not just the fact that you know you're in you're in a lockdown. You you're just playing copious numbers of games, which you've got to get up for physically and mentally, and it's not easy to do. I mean, I think that the mental thing, as you said, uh, you know, affecting the guys so much, but also uh, you know, for yourself me the rest of the senior management team and everyone around the venue it it has been incredibly challenging and, and incredibly stressful i think we, we don't mind admitting saying that it, this time uh, with the the schedule that we've been under trying to turn around games with limited numbers of staff as well as has been quite difficult but the support we've received from the fans even though we haven't been able to get here has been amazing hasn't it yeah uh and uh you know the the support from the fans that we're seeing online social media the feedback we're getting uh, the the team that are behind the cameras tonight, mainly volunteers, turning out every game, having to do all the extra things that we don't normally have to do, like clean and change basketballs, wiping everything down every five minutes on, on court side, the copious number of other things that have to go on around the building just to, just to make a game happen without an audience is... Um, you know, it, it, it's challenging, and uh, and equally as you know, uh, it's not just the club this season. It's trying to keep the building ticking over as well. And right now, we're a vaccination centre. That's what this old building ultimately is. It's you know, it's like this on a Friday night, and the rest of the week, it's it's either shut or um, we're, we're vaccinating the local population. Not us personally. But the, the the great NHS and we're, we're we're trying to support those guys as best we can. I think that on those moments though, we've both just seen a, a car park full of cars and people coming through the building, and it it does give you hope uh, that when we do get back up and running, uh, hopefully now uh, 
when the, the timetable unfolds and how things pan out, uh, that it, it is just going to be great to see that back and go back to where we were a, a year from now, actually, with the, the GB versus Germany game uh, right here. And a quick shout out to uh, GB uh, and everyone involved in Team GB for a phenomenal performance uh, in the Eurobasket qualifiers. But uh, that was a year ago. And yeah. Yeah, it's just great to, to have that memory and think, right, when we do get people back, it's going to be amazing to have everyone back here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Again, on on social media today, I've seen lots and lots of posts, the photos from the the GB game last year, because it literally is a year today, uh, different night, but literally a year. And um, uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to um, get your head around that, really, uh, in the sense that. Uh, you had that that night and then you look at this now and we love this venue but it's it's the people in the venue that make it what it is so uh um but hopefully you know we we get we get back to that uh sooner rather than later and uh back to some form of normality i mean is there anything you'd like to say just directly to the season ticket holders who have been so fantastic in their support um because you know when we were a year away from where we are right now uh, season ticket sales were going so fantastically well. We were looking like we we're going to have the most season ticket holders I think we've ever had in the history of the club. And um, so many of them have, have been so uh, generous and fantastic to stick with us through this season. Um, but I wondered if you had a, a message particularly just to those season ticket holders. And, you know, we we hope to have them back as soon as we can. But certainly, you know, we've, we've offered packages and put things in place to roll yeah. through to next season as well. I mean, ultimately, it's um, please, please, please stay with us. Um, you know, the, 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 the season ticket holders, particularly are the backbone of the club. Uh, it's, it's a very frustrating situation for me. It's taken, you know, 20 years to um, get the club into the position that it's in. And the early years were very tough. Um, you know, early 2000s particularly, uh, and to get it, get the business into a shape where it actually looks like it's going to really move forward, and then to be hit with this, uh, and tread well, uh, we haven't treaded water this season. The government grants helped to cover the overheads to an extent, but we've had to unfortunately borrow, you know significant sums of money to get through this season that are going to take the next decade to pay off so that that's incredibly frustrating from my point of view but that's my bug to bear um, I've done it before and I'll, I'll do it again uh, you won't you won't see sight of that it's it's just it's just uh, um, it's just where we are in terms of, of, of what we've just been through and we're not the only business that uh, have had to go through it and in actual fact we fared a lot better than than a number of other um businesses in 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 our sector so uh, we just take it on the chin um you know really really need um the backing of of, of season ticket holders and all the supporters in the club to um to come back to us that, that at the point that we're allowed to have people in i'm sure and i know from reading uh all the information i see that you know, there are a lot of people that can't wait to get back and get back to some form of normality. And uh, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying to everybody, please stick with us. And uh, better times are coming. Absolutely. I mean, great times have been here already this season. The the cup right next to you there. Um, before we bring the the players in, uh, the first final uh, that you've um, not been at, I know, in in your history of running the the club. Uh, what was it like to to see the guys lift that on on VVL player? It's on Sky Sports, in fact. Like. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely amazing. I'm just really really chuffed for the guys, really chuffed. And uh, you know, we we kind of set out a, a plan years ago with with Fab to uh, it was kind of to to do a double every year. <laughs> that was the that was the wish, you know. And 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 actually, we kind of achieved that, which has has been immense. And obviously, Ian's following on from that mantle now. Um, already two in, in in the bag, which is which is great. Uh, so uh, and and to do it in 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 the challenging times that we're in as well, where it's it's very hard to see a pathway, um, it is great. So uh, hopefully we can continue in that vein moving forward. It's always a, a wish. It's not an, an you know it's not an expectation. It's we try our best to 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 be in the mix and. Um, uh, 
that's what we intend to do moving forward. It's going to get harder every year. The clubs around us are getting uh, getting stronger, uh, finding their way um, as businesses in their own right. So, and, and I'm no doubt there'll be new clubs coming to the league in in, in the next few years as well. So, um, our job is to make sure that we're staying in that top that top end. And that we will. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for your time and uh, coming on this uh, live nesting. Uh, we're going to get uh, the players through in just a second. But first, Ian, if I could just get you, after we uh, COVID secure, give that mic a quick wipe. We'll get uh, uh, Ian onto the court. Paul, thank, thank you, you very done. much. So once again, if you are watching live right now, please do send in those questions at live at newcastle-eagles.com to send in your questions. Thank you so much to everyone who has already. Uh, I know there's uh, loads of you watching online. A um, bunch of you... Um, I think with uh, with family all uh, gathered around the TV, if you've managed to uh, plug your uh, laptop or iPad or whatever it is into the TV to join us tonight on the uh, Newcastle Eagles box office. And uh, we do, of course, uh, tomorrow night on the box office as well, have WBBL action. Uh, we're not joined by any of the women's team players tonight, but hopefully at some point in the future as we look to do more of these events. But right now, I want to welcome on head coach Ian McLeod. Please, yeah, if you can, you can come and join us here. That'd be great. Evening, Dan. Good evening. Yeah. We do almost want to have like some people clapping or something, but it's a, it is strange we to be. We see that every Friday. I know, yeah. <laughs> it is strange to be in in this magnificent setting, isn't it? That we are so proud of, and we've seen so many incredible basketball games in already. I mean, we were we were selling out game after game after game towards the back end of the season. Obviously, we had to stop last year. Um, is it the thing that, that you guys are, are really missing this season? Yeah, definitely. But it, it's the it's the atmosphere all around the match night. It's when you come in and there's no one in the building. You know, it's it's the fans in the foyer. It's everything. It's the music. You need to turn the music up, by the way, Dan. Um, but it's everything. It's the whole atmosphere. It's not just the faces and the people sitting there. It's what they bring um, to the whole match night experience. It's easier to get parked, um, but that's about the only thing that's good for us, you know. I mean, you have uh, obviously now in your second season as head coach, already brought us the second trophy. Thank you very much to one of our fantastic Wings team volunteers. Didn't see you there uh, doing the COVID stuff. Um, you have you know, lifted that second cup already of silverware in the cabinet. Um, but I think for you, I think it's safe to say that it's, it's really been about the transformation that you've been able to bring to the team behind the, 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 the game night, if you like, yeah. behind the, the finals that's been your mark if you like on on the club and the way that things have changed that perhaps fans don't get to see yeah i i, I think one of the big things for me is it's building the program it's not just the team um of course the team is a huge part of it it's the biggest part of it um but it's it's everything off court as well it's developments not just of players of coaches of staff of volunteers um and we're working hard on that stuff too you know i think later on in the season hopefully we can we can announce some different things that we're doing but um I like to think that I'm a program builder, you know, it's not just about putting five guys on the court and throwing a basketball out there. Um, so it's about getting involved in basketball in every way. You know, it's, it's not just about what we do on a Friday, you know, that's, that's one day out of the week for us. But um, of course, hugely important, but there is more to it than that as well. You have obviously brought in some new guys this season, as uh, is always the case in pretty much every basketball team in the world. And I think that the guys who have come in this season despite the fact that it's been such an unusual time you know they haven't been able to go out and socialize in this amazing city that we live in as well they've they've had a, a very different experience as a first time in, in Newcastle but they seem to have gelled really well yeah they have and it's about getting the right people you know it's not they're not just players they're people um I'm not devastated that they can't go out to nightclubs um I'm all right with that actually um <laughs> But yeah, I think Paul alluded to it earlier, you know, just practice, go home, you know, wait for the game, come back, you know, it, it's difficult for them. But we've got the right people in there, a good group, they're a close-knit group, um, and it, it, that's the first step as well, you know. Um, we've, we play a little bit different basketball over the last couple of years, um, I think the team is well balanced. Um, you know, we're not able to have 15, 16, 17 players, you know, we're not London Lions, we don't have that. So it's about getting the guys, the right guys in that we are able to focus on. Uh, talking about some of those right guys, uh, you know, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic to see the success that these three players that we're about to bring out uh, have brought to the club uh, over the years, uh, one over all of the years. Um, so we'll, we'll bring them out now. Uh, guys, if you can please come and join us on court. Ramon Fletcher, Drew Lasker and Mr. 26, oh. Darius Defoe. Again, it does feel like we should have applause. 
I look forward to doing this next season when we can have uh, a crowd of uh, two and a half thousand people, hopefully, uh, in the venue for this. So this is live, guys. Can we drink so, as well? Uh, yeah, you can. It's for you. Yeah, uh, th this is live, so uh, we need to watch the language. Obviously, we'll get a tea. We've seen that already a couple of times, uh, even if it didn't happen. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> to wear that, that's a tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that, um, guys, first of all, I just want to start off by saying huge congratulations uh, on that cup there, uh, you know, the, the BBL Cup, number 26 for the club, but uh, also for, for getting through this season, which has just been so incredibly different to every other season that we've seen all three of you play uh, in the BBL and, and here at the Eagles. I mean, I'll start with you, Fletch, right in, in the middle there. How how has it been and what's, what's this season been? Been like, how have you managed to get through so far? It's different. It's different. It's one of those things that's it's, it's going to be your mental over your physical, you know, your physical abilities because everybody around the world is going through the same thing. It's going to be different showing up to work for everybody. You know, limited people coming into stores, limited people going to the malls. Going, they can't get food and stuff like that. So it's something that we adjusted in March. But coming in, playing in a game with no fans is something that, you know, you can talk about it, you can see it on TV, but until you actually experience it. It's it's unbelievable, especially on a road when that you know that counter starts what you do you know that picks you up playing and everything like that. So it's just something that we have to basically just get over you know we here to play ball. So that's what we got to do. I mean, Drew, you uh, and Dee both got family here in the region. How uh, has it uh, affected you know you and and the way that you've just been able to sort of live your life because this is home for you. Yeah, that's been very difficult. I mean, my wife probably every two weeks she says I want to go on holiday. I need some sun. And um, it's, a, it's a little bit easier for me because obviously I get that social interaction. I come to practice every day. I get that adult conversation with these guys, whereas, you know, my wife, she's at home talking to a six-month-year-old every day. So, um, you know, I, I, I try to help where I can, you know, but it is difficult. It's, it is difficult, not only for her, but uh, all the moms and, yeah. and women out there as well. Yep. D, I, I know you've been around the club, obviously, for all of the success that, the, you know, the 26 trophies, the 26th next to you right there. Um, I know that winning is a huge motivator for everyone in sport, but uh, how have you managed to keep yourself motivated at these games, at the final, when we haven't got our fantastic support and everyone cheering along as we've become used to with the best fans in the BBL that we have at the Eagles? Well, it, it is tough having no fans, you know? But at the same time, you know, like Fred said, you have to find a way to, to, to keep going, you know. But at the, at the same time, we just can't wait, you know, for for, for the fans to be back, you know. So, yeah. I'm going to jump into some of the questions that have been sent in. One here uh, relates, I think, to, yeah. to all of you to have contribution to, as I know that, you know, as the, the sort of the, um, you know, the, the senior guys on the squad, uh, you, know, you, you have had conversations all through last summer and continue through the season. Um, in terms of recruiting and putting this team together, uh, Ian, um, you know, is that something that just takes place in the off-season or, or is, it, is it an all-season round thing? You know, once you've got your team together, do you go, right, no, oh, I'm set now or does that go on all year round? In an ideal world, you're set. You know, when the first pre-season comes, you're set and that's stable, and you build upon that. Obviously, you know, we made a change last year um, in around November. You know, we brought we brought CG in, which is a big thing. We're not we're not one of these teams that chops and changes throughout the season. You know, and it's it's part of the players having that trust um, that the organisation does back them. You know, um, this year, obviously, we brought Shore in, but it was always the plan that we were going to have one more. We were hoping this year it would be Tosan Ehuman, um, because he wasn't at Princeton uh, because of the NCAA season stalled, but the NCAA just didn't approve that, um, unfortunately. So we were always looking for an extra guy in the front court. Um, we knew it had to be a British passport, um, and Shorey was there to, to add to that. So ideally, yes, you want, you want to start day one right the way through with the same team. It, it's not football. The transfer window doesn't open, then you go and try and bring some people in. Um, ideally, we have that consistency right through. Fletch, what's it like in, in the season when a new guy does come in? You know, you, you're captain, you've got to now coordinate the team on court with a, a new body who, like Shorey, you know, he hasn't been mm -hmm. there for the, for the first few games of the season. It's 50-50. You've got to adjust to what he does, what strengths that he has, what, he, what he's capable of doing. And he has to also adjust to what we've been doing, how we've been rolling, our type of system and stuff like that. And then it intertwines. You know, we brought him here for a reason. We did all the research that we can about him. So 
obviously we see something that's going to fit in the system. So it's not as hard as you think it is, but getting up to a team that's already rolling, that played almost 10, 12 games already, it's more tough for, it'll probably be more tough for that person coming in than it is for, you know, for us. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, other teams and other players uh, you know, outside of, of the Eagles camp just for no, a moment. No, thank you. No. One, <laughs> one of the questions that, that came in, which I, I, I kind of liked, and I wondered um, if, if I'll start with you, Drew, um, outside of the, the Eagles, are there players at other clubs who you particularly become quite friendly with i mean you know you you obviously are both uh well all three of you obviously have been around the league for a long time you see a lot of the guys you know on court it's all business but off the court is there a, a connection a relationship between you, yourselves all three of you and, and other players in the league yeah typically year to year like you'll you'll see that um with the new crop that comes in it's maybe a couple of guys that you maybe uh know the same person or from the same area so you normally gravitate towards one of those guys but this year has actually been kind of different because I know me personally with COVID and everything well just our whole team normally before a game we will um, you know talk to the opposition to the guys that we know I haven't had one conversation with another guy all year long um, which is kind of strange uh, just because all of the restrictions and everything so um, that part of it is a little bit different obviously because the other role that I have I've probably have spoken to more guys than I've ever have, obviously, <laughs> from doing the BBL show. So that's been actually kind of cool, just kind of getting on. <laughs> you can catch that, that, that on YouTube, but the following link. You know, <laughs> right, BBL show. Plug in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you tune in. But, <laughs> but no, nah, but no, nah, it's, uh, it's been good just to not only for myself getting to see guys on another light, but for fans as well, getting to know know the guys because obviously it's what you see on court but you know there's a lot more to us than just basketball players what about you guys i think with me it's kind of been different because i think everybody in the league has bonded over the COVID situation so when we see them it's it's never anything that we're angry towards them or we don't like them or we hate them or things like that we always have something to talk about even if it's offside outside like on instagram or twitter or something like that I think it's a couple players that I've talked to, knew that I've known. So Kevin Ware, I know him through a, you know, a mutual friend. And everybody else, like the people at Leicester, of course, Jamel and you know the London guys as well, that we've known for years. We it's it's something different because usually we don't talk before games or after games or during season. But for some reason, it's kind of more social. But like Drew said, we really don't talk that much. But it's just something different about the bond of the whole league this year. D, what about yourself? Well, <laughs> you, you've, you've seen them all in uh, all those seasons. 26 cups you left know? in against them. I know when Kieran Achara was here, anyone who saw uh, the live coverage on Sky, uh, Kieran was, uh, yeah, was, was not happy to see you standing next to some silverware, but um, used to it, though. Hey, what can I say? But now, nah, it is tough, though, you know, being, around, being in the league for so long, you know, and knowing all the different guys, but at the same time, cannot really, you know, speak to them like you used to because of the, 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 the C19 and all that. But, you know, it is different, but you have to adopt to it. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's it. The C19, bro? Yeah, the C19, we're abbreviating now. Hey. Um, <laughs> of, of, all the, the, of all the places that, that you've, you've played, D, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the, oh, out, out, of the guys, out of the guys here, you know, uh, you know whether it was uh, here at ECA, Sports Central, the, the, the Utilita Arena, Metro Radio Arena previously, um, what would you say is the, the best venue that you've played in? It could be the O2, perhaps, for the playoff final. What's the, the best place you've, you've played a game of basketball? Or, or further afield when we've gone into Europe? Or, or what's the best venue? What's, the, what's been the best experience for you? Damn, that's a lot, Dan. Newcastle <laughs> <laughs> College. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys might want to pick up while D thinks, but... Uh, I, I would say the O2. That, that one was that one was really special, mm, you know. I, I would say the O2. What about you guys? I think that opening day here was pretty good too, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. when True. we played that first game, I mean, even though we lost, but it's just the fact that what everybody's been building for so many years. Play that first game that was special. Yeah. That was a special game, special, just a special situation. But like D said, that O2 was was different. The first time we went, that was different. 
Which of uh, which of all these finals D was was your favourite? I mean, the you know there's there's 26, 26 cups. Um, you know, d- does playing at the O2 and, and lifting it in the playoffs, uh, you know, mean mean more, or is it the, the the cup, or you know, was it the first one? I would say the first one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always good winning your first trophy. You know, so I'll go the first one. First one. Yeah. Uh, does your uh, 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 I'll just go to, to Drew. Does your approach change mentally going into to a final because it's such a big game? This is a question that got set in by one of the season ticket holders. Is it is it is it a mental switch where you say right, we got to mean business now. This is a final. The, the silver on the line. Yeah, it is a little bit different um, from a from a normal game. Mentally, you just kind of. And you go in there knowing that um, you got to turn up and it's, it's no tomorrow. It's now no next week. So um, I always kind of go in there with, with nothing to lose mentality. I don't I always say to myself, I don't want to wake up in the morning and say, I could have done this. I should have done that. And so um, th- that's the different mentality you kind of take into a final. How is it for you, coach, going into a final? I mean, the the pressure is on, and I mean, certainly it was uh, the you know the last game of basketball played in last season. But you know, your first final as uh, head coach must have felt a bit special and uh, a bit of extra pressure. Yeah, it did. It was very special, you know, particularly because the family was there and things like that, which was awesome. Um, it was a tough one because we were obviously we were short-handed for that, you know, and we were on the we were on the other side of that this year. But one of the big questions was, you know, will we change our game? Will we slow things down? But like kind of what Drew's just said there, if you change your game for a final, you change how you play, and you maybe you try and surprise the other team a bit too much, and then you don't think you've actually stayed true to your values and what you do, like that would feel bad the next day if you if you lost that. But if you know this is what we do, you know, we put the best version of ourselves out there, we win or we lose. Um, so it's getting that balance, you know, because. I mean, basketball is a simple game, and quite often it's the coaches that make it difficult. You know, we try to overthink things. Um, so it, it's about getting that balance. You're trying to obviously, you know, put a few surprises in there for the game, but you don't want to go away from your identity and what you do too much. Season after season uh, that you guys have been around the, the league, um, you know, would you say that the, the league right now is is getting you know, better, it's, it's different, it's faster. How has the league developed over the time that, that all three of you played in, in the BBL? Fletch, you want to start? <laughs> um, I think it's different. I think, I think this year is similar to my first year as far as the teams, um, but the competitiveness, the coaching is way better. Not saying the coaching was bad when I was there my first year, but everybody is paying a lot of attention to detail. And everybody's keeping it simple and they realizing it does take all these fancy plays or these schemes and everything like that. They just letting players play when they chip in and, you know, they do what they do. And I just think it's way more competitive than it's been in the past, in my, in my opinion, from top to bottom. D, I mean, you've been uh, around the, 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 the league uh, longer than uh, the other two guys. Uh, how has it changed? I, I think, um, like, the, the speed is it's way quicker. It's, it's, it's get, the league's getting way better from the one I first started, mm. you know. But like like Floyd said, you know, it's it's a, it's a different players and a different you know the coaching, different coaches from different clubs. You know, it, it's getting you know way better. <laughs> Drew, Drew, you've seen it Good from answer. from mm-hmm. a uh, an expert uh, analyst point of view, uh, sitting at the sidelines for Sky Sports and uh, probably getting to, to watch games in a slightly different way to, to the rest of the guys. Um, how have you seen the, the this season in particular uh, be different to, to previous seasons in the BBL? Yeah, first of all, I always say I never use the word expert. I say educated opinion. Sure. Um, Secondly, um, yeah, the league has changed. I think from from a pace from a pace standpoint, is much quicker. Obviously, it's a lot more threes. I was actually just watching a clip um, yesterday of early years because Plymouth got the thousand games uh, coming up, and the game was played so differently. We had our big man down at it. We were throwing the ball too, waiting on him to do his thing and kind of playing around here. Whereas more more so today is more about the three balls, more about movement off the ball. But I would say this season in particular has really changed because um, you got an extra American in, so that's an uh, added piece of talent. And then also I feel like um, the British guys are much better from earlier. Um, you got a lot of accomplished British guys that's playing here now. So when you mix in those two, I feel like the league is stronger and it's just going to continue to get better. 
I wanted to ask all of you, and I, I'm going to ask uh, Ian as well. Um, it's it's a very, very simple, very short question, the shortest of all the ones that was sent in, actually, uh, and that is, uh, why basketball? Mm. Why, why basketball? What it's gravity indoors and we live in England. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's an indoor sport. That's my answer. Great, great <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> nah, for me, I was this height at 14, so they're like, oh, you're going to be huge. And I stayed this height, so... No. no, it was basketball for me because um, the Eagles came into my school at 13, 14 years old. Chris Fight, one of the players um, back in the day, who's coaching now in Division Two um, in NCAA, um, and that was it. Really, he just kind of got the bug and got hooked on that. It was supposed to be football. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your dad was a football coach uh, for Newcastle United, and that was going to be the route. But then, yeah, turned to basketball. Okay. Do you guys have uh, ventures into other sports as well, or, or has it always been basketball for all three of you? Oh, man, I tried American football for a week, and then I realized <laughs> I don't like contact, so <laughs> it, it was basketball after that. So For me, I tried cricket. <laughs> well, it's too tough for that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, basketball didn't. <laughs> I never knew that. I'd love that. Oh, yeah, same man. here. I played um, American football, baseball, and um, and ran uh, track and field, but basketball. Michael Jordan was my idol, mm -hmm. so I naturally gravitated to basketball. I think it's it's interesting that you you know you obviously having t two Americans here, and uh, you just mentioned uh, y yourself, you know. In, in the history of the, the BBL uh, around this club, there's been so many phenomenal coaches. Um, and in this week in particular, I just wanted to sort of obviously shout out as well to a uh, former BBL coach uh, now making uh, a huge success in the NBA with uh, Chris Finch going mm -hmm. off to, to Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, Nick Nurse, obviously, uh, with the Raptors as well. Our very own Fab Flanoy over with the, the, the Raptors too. Um, it feels like, Ian, in the years that you've been around British basketball, that you've seen it, um, that globally as well, th there's a bit more attention on what we're doing here in the UK. Yeah, I think it is. It probably starts from things like the um, the NBA games coming to this country, you know, so maybe that maybe that helped bridge the gap a little bit as well. Um, but I think as a, as a culture in the UK, we're closer to an American culture than we are a European culture. You know, I think even the style of basketball here, it's not the same as, you know, it, the style I'm talking about, not the level. It's not the same as, you know, Spain and France. They play a little bit differently. We are quite Americanized in the way we play as well. And I think um, the younger British players, that's what they look to more. They look to the NBA, they look to the NCAA as opposed to the European style. So it goes hand in hand, really. And, the, you know, there's a reason why the NBA is trying to get into this market. They recognize that we have a similar, you know, culture and similar population. Elsewhere in uh, the, the world, whether it's the NBA, uh, who do you guys follow? What other other clubs are you, are you looking out for, and what teams are you, are you guys supporting? In the NBA or every everywhere? Everywhere, NBA, NFL. I'm just a L Laker fan, Chiefs fan. That's it. Man City fan too, baby. Yeah, Laker bandwagon fans. These two, right? <laughs> oh, wow. <Damn>, yeah. <laughs> right Houston. there, Los Angeles, <laughs> Kansas, <laughs> Manchester. Yeah. What's the connection there? I'm a globe trotter. Top of the league. Yeah, top of the league. <laughs> good, good teams. Good teams. Yeah. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm hard to pick them. I'm a LeBron fan. And Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say one. Who, who do you guys say has been you, your biggest influence, uh, either sporting person or, or otherwise? You know, you, you might pick LeBron. Uh, for you guys as well, who's, who do you think has been your biggest influence as a, a sports person or, or on your careers? For me, my mum. Yeah, she, she, yeah. she. Does she get to watch the games? Does she get to follow the games? Yeah, she gets to watch it, you know. When we, every time we play London, she used to come to the game, you know, so I would say my mum. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. She has a bone to pick with the BBL player too. They owe her a little bit of money, so. <laughs> I'm sure but yeah, that out. it's her. She she's she's everything, of course. And doubt her. I mean, probably yeah. sound a little cliche, but I don't yeah. think none of us would be up here without yeah, them. Yeah, I hear so. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, same for me. I mean, with sporting, like I mentioned before, it's Michael Jordan. Um, he was always the reason why I kind of gravitated to basketball. But um, the reason why I was able to get to this level is the traits that I learned from my moms mm -hmm. and pops and so um yeah shout out to them what are your uh 
hopes, your dreams. What's you know what's next for for, for all three of you guys? Yeah. You know we've we've seen so much success already here at the Eagles. Oh, there's a there's a great stat actually. I was on I was on the phone with Drew the other day. He told me this great stat, which was uh, that uh, after the the three of you now have uh, totted up a total of 44 titles Awful. amongst yeah. you, uh, number 44 in the middle there. We're still in conversations with D about changing his number to 26. Uh, but uh, really? no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but what's what's what, what's ne- what's next or are you just focused on on this this season have you got dreams be- beyond the end of the season have you got thoughts beyond that or is it is that just too far ahead i think i'm too old right now for dreams I think it's like <laughs> it's more goals you know it's more goals of course i want to you know play as much as as long as i can of course and whatever the next career or whatever i decide to do i want to do that as well but right now especially with this COVID hitting it really kind of made me take a step back and take it day by day day by day yeah. and enjoy the moment you know so i don't think too far ahead because it can go fast yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i totally agree with flesh that especially for me now like i'm really trying to enjoy the moment because you know i'm coming close to the end and and so I want to enjoy like the little things, driving to practice, little stuff like yeah. that. Most importantly, like just being with the guys, the bus trips, I've been really um, making sure I stay in a moment. And, and so uh, yeah. I guess besides that is just trying to um, keep a, a, the, the standard to where the next generation can just keep this thing going. We can look back. 15, 20 years from now, and the Newcastle Eagles is still on top, just like when T.J. Walker, Lennart, mm-hmm. Stewart, they look at the Eagles and they see that we're still winning. Hopefully, um, we can just keep that thing going for the next guys that's coming up, like the the um, the uh, Timber and guys like that. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So good. So good, <laughs> Timber, yeah. yeah. So for those young guys. Man, you feel old up here. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm the same with the guys, yeah. you know. You mentioned Savera and Temba, actually, and ju- just real quick before we wrap things up, um, uh, for the the rest of the the team, the guys who you know they're, they're new into Newcastle, they're new into the Eagles, um, you know, the fans haven't had that chance to to meet uh, the new guys, you know, get the the post game autographs, uh, you know, have those conversations, get to know them, the uh, you know, whether it's bowling night, pizza night, and all the other things that we would normally want to try and do across the season with our season ticket holders as well who. Yeah, they always come along and support us and, and get to chat to you guys. Uh, what are the rest of the guys like? You know, who's the funniest guy on the team? Who's who's the yeah, of, of the new guys? Who, you know, who's who's the who's the one that's that's keeping the locker room laughing? I'll, I'll start off. I'll say um, for me because we probably all have different perspectives of him. I, I would say Cortez is probably the silliest. Yep. He's silly. Yep. Um, if you need, uh, if you have a formal event and you need a speaker, you go to Justin, he's oh, yeah. your guy. <laughs> um, he's like the president kind of. Yep. And then, uh, Rex, he'll just make you feel good when you're in his, when you're in his presence. Like he'll pat you on your back, give you a high five, just smiling. Like he's a typical California guy. So <laughs> that's, that, that, that's my out. perspective of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All, all in agreement on that yeah, one. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> we, we've we've heard a little bit uh, on uh, Sky Sports when they've been doing their uh, little sort of you know, pre <laughs> pre game bits about the music in the locker room as well. Um, you know, the, the the guys and I sometimes I think I hear that Fletch is, is yeah. usually the locker room DJ. What are the other guys like in terms of the tunes that they're putting on at practice? And, uh, and we've been listening to a hyped. lot of British rap lately. A lot, a lot of British rap, and okay. I think that's because of Darius, Shuri. <laughs> And Cortez. Cortez is really in a British rap, so. And Timber. And Timber. Yeah, yeah Timber. So it varies. Yeah. It varies from that. Don't, don't let Eddie get into the music. Yeah. They have us listen to a <laughs> podcast, probably. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Coach, with, with the new guys coming in, um, you know, they've all just been so fantastic, as I said before, in terms of gelling with, with the team. But you must be immensely proud about how you, you've had the, you know, these three rock-solid guys uh, alongside you this season as well. Yeah, it's been all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, um, you know, the, the success of this club has been on, built on consistency. So, you know, these guys, again, you know, coming back and, and, um, and leading the way. You know, we don't, like Fletch is our captain on game days. It goes down on the score sheet. But I refer to these guys, these are the leadership group. You know, and, and they all bring different things to the table. Like how Fletch does stuff, Darius is not going to do the same thing. You know, but Darius leads in a very different way. Um, 
you know, and sometimes he's, you know, he's always he's laughing and joking. But as far as the professionalism he brings is huge. You know, I think Drew's kind of like he, he, a little bit of everything with that. You know, he's got the experience in the league. He's a very good professional, but he's also he has a coaching background as well. You know, some things that he does. So they all lead in different ways. Um, so to have that combination is really good. Like they're very, they're three very different people, very different players. Um, and it's not really what I need; it's what the team needs. And, they, and between the three of them, they usually get it right. Well, we can't wait to see uh, more action from you guys. Um, you know, we, we obviously uh, don't want to dwell on it, but uh, unfortunate result on on, on Monday. Uh, you know, very very tough game, a tough situation. And um, you know, going forwards fr from that, you know, how are you approaching this Friday's game and, and to get straight into to the you know, immediate return to the court? I think realistically, you know, it's 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 been it's been a tough ten days, probably ten, eleven days, whatever it is. Um, with the five games we've had, you know, we've we've picked up one win. I think realistically, we've had four bad quarters in five games, maybe four and a half. Um, and you know, those those moments hurt. Um, I think what you saw on the London game, you know, okay, we didn't pick up the win, but our intent was very good. I thought the way we fought was excellent. The way the guys came together, that was ex it was really good. I mean, it was a f it was a ten point game in the last four minutes. We got two stops in that time. We you know we missed a couple of open shots. It could have been a very different game. Um, and we are fighting. You know, I think that the people we've got as well as the players, the, they're proud. They're competitors. Um, and listen. Ten days changes a lot in basketball. We go back two weeks, and you know the noise was very different. You know, so we're still fighting. There's still a lot more there to play for. Um, I think even since even since the Sheffield loss, our trajectory is good as far as you know what we're tracking towards. Um, and our focus now, we finish as high as we can in the league, and we go into the playoffs rolling. rolling. You know, and and we make some noise for the rest of the season. Rolling. You, you say absolutely about fight as well. The the fight on court has been absolutely fantastic. You know, you guys really have been you know putting it in and you can see that I think in, in every game it's it's definitely one of the things that's been stand out from this this season you know if Fletch took a charge in the last game <laughs> that's the second charge of his career yeah Clip that. It, it's it's just been brilliant to, to watch you guys, and you know it's it's just been absolutely you know amazing to see the success, but also what you put into it every game. Uh, you know, as as a fan of the sport and, and the team as well as working here as well. So appreciate uh, that, Dan. I, I just want to uh, get you that. last to just to, to wrap things up. Thank you so much for spending the time with us this evening. Well, thank um, you. More questions coming in from season ticket holders. I'm not going to have time to get through all of them. Thank you so much for sending all of them <laughs> in, though. We are going to have uh, some more of the guys uh, in for some more live nestings like this, uh, and also uh, we are going to hopefully uh, be able to uh, get some of uh, your faces on here for some video questions and what have you as well but we'll come on to all that in the future just want to do one last thing to wrap up which is um, if you can uh, the cameras are over the far side there looking into them just uh, a message to those season ticket holders who have just been so fantastic in their support because we, we wouldn't be here without them and you know it, it's it's tough we, we really desperately want to have them here yep. um, but from you guys and on behalf of the rest of the team what would you like to say D I'll let you start off if, if you want to well, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you, you know, I know it's a tough time with everything that's going on, but, you know, but keep keep supporting the team, keep supporting the club, and big thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Fletch. Be patient, be patient um, with us, with the club, with the situation that everybody's going through, and continue to support us, because we have a great group of guys here, and hopefully you guys can get out and watch us play, we compete, we play hard. And looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, I would say uh, we wouldn't, us three and Mac included, we wouldn't be here without the club, and the club wouldn't be here without the supporters. So whether that's financial help, whether that's just support, volunteering, all the things that happen behind the scenes. So we appreciate you guys. We miss you guys. And uh, we can't wait to see you um, back on there in the East Stands. Absolutely. East, right? East, that's right. It's okay. East, yeah. Back or is that, the, is that the Defoe stand? Back there. Oh, 26. Oh, oh, my. <laughs> stand 26. Absolutely. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> we, 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 might have, we might have to look at that. We might have to look the at that. Stand, Ian, as well, for, from, from you to, to wrap up a, a message for, for the fans, the season ticket holders, whose support has just been uh, fantastic uh, when we've been desperate to have them back and I know they've been desperate to be here too. Yeah, from us, I mean, just to echo what the guys said, you know, we're looking forward to having everyone back. Um, 
you know, there's there's always going to be some lows, but you can't when the when the when the highs are so high, it's, it's the lows are bigger as well. So mm -hmm. don't worry about that. We'll always give you the highs. Um, but we're waiting. We're excited for you guys to come back. Um, you're going to see a team that's going to continue to fight on the court. Um, I said in July that we were putting an exciting team together, and I think we followed through on that. Um, it's now about you know moving forward, and hopefully there's there's plenty more highs to come. Uh, Ian, Drew, Fletch. Darius, thank you so much, Mr. 26, uh, for, for coming down tonight and uh, to everyone for watching and for all of our season ticket holders for all of your support. Uh, we can't thank you enough for, on behalf of Paul, everyone involved with the club, everyone here at the uh, Eagles Community Arena as well. It's, uh, it's been an incredibly, incredibly difficult 12 months for the whole world, uh, but we couldn't have done what we've done here at the club uh, without all of your support. We hugely appreciate it. Uh, we hope you'll stick with us. We uh, want to see you back here as soon as we can. And if you, uh, you know, do can join us for more of these live nestings, we'd really appreciate it too. It'd be great to have all your feedback and hear from you on social media. And make sure you keep in touch with everything going on at the club on there as well and uh, keep your support up. We uh, can't wait to uh, get you back and hopefully get uh, another one of those pieces of silverware uh, here okay. to show you as well later in the season. Mm, so right. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, to everyone, for all my guests. Thank you, thank you. And we hope to see you next time. Make sure you join the game Friday as well. Big one on Friday.